there is a lot of you this video. Okay, before we get started, a large thank you to Jared, Nan, Mandel, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my man. Duncan, Studio for Gaming. Uh, I certainly can't pronounce that. I will try Uilasis. Thank you for your support. Sorry for butchering your name, bro. James, Chris, Flailing Gnome, and Retro Gamer for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Mike Harden Games and Mandel Cantor for their immense support this month to the channel on Patreon. Hello guys, and today we're going to add some jumping attacks and running attacks. going to take one episode break from archery. We'll finish it in the next episode. I uh, just got to finish prototyping some stuff. Before we start, check this out. This is my solo project, Nephilim. So you can see here I have my straight sword. And I actually have a thing called weapon actions. So you actually decide your action based on uh, the weapon itself. So... For example, like your left bumper action on a spellcaster item will be casting a spell, but your left bumper action on the sword will be blocking. Now this makes the system a lot more modular and you can give certain weapons different actions for buttons. I'm going to cover this in the Soul series in the future if you guys want me to because it makes everything a lot cleaner. I want to cover it. If you guys are interested in this, please comment below. As you can see, like the bow, for example, has if you release the RB button, it's fire and arrow action. If you hold the RB button, it's a draw arrow action. But if you hold the RB with a straight sword, it's an intent backstab or a post action. So it just adds a lot of modularness to the weapons, makes it a lot more cleaner, it makes the code a lot more neater, and uh, I, I plan on adding that, so if you do want to see that, please leave a comment below. But as I said, on this episode now, I have this jumping, running, and uh, two-handed jumping, running attack animations. We're going to take a one-episode break from archery, and we're going to add in these jumping and running attacks. So um, these animations will actually most likely be available soon. Uh, we're finishing up the archery animation package, and then we're going to um, put that up on the asset store, and I'm going to sell it in my Discord as well. Um, we're also going to make some weapon animation sets for you guys who are watching this tutorial series if you want them. We're thinking about starting out with a straight sword animation set. Uh, but I digress. Let's continue with the video. So if you guys have your own animations, you can follow along. I'm just going to make an empty state here now. Uh, so this one's going to be called One-Handed Running Attack 01. Make sure I spelled that right. And then we're going to copy that and make a Two-Handed Running Attack 01. And then we're going to make a One-Handed Jumping Attack 01 and a Two-Handed Jumping Attack 01. Going to make a transition back to the empty state as we always do. Nothing different there. You can check foot IK if you want. Makes the animations look a bit nicer. Don't check it for the jumping animations though because your feet are leaving the ground. Um, and then just drag your animations in. So normally you would have some unarmed animations here because as you remember, when we equip our weapon, our weapon equips an animator overrider controller and then it changes the animations on the controller depending on the weapon you're holding. Since I don't have unarmed running animations for jumping attack and running attack, I'm just going to use these as my default placeholder animations, but I'm still going to go through the process of dragging them in on the weapon controller to show you what I mean. So like normally right now I would have unarmed running attack 01 uh, and unarmed jumping attack 01. Wouldn't have two-handed because you can't two-hand the unarmed weapon. Um, and I would override these animations in the controller. Um, but since I've only had these animations, I'm just going to drag these in and then I'm, I'm still going to override them just to show you the process because if you are a person out there who has the unarmed animations, Put those in on your uh, on your base animator file, and then put these in on your override. So now, if I go to my uh, data folder where my sword is, and I go to my items, I'll just click the sword for example because that's the example I'm using this video. You'll see if I scroll on here, um, we can override these animations. So normally these would be your unarmed like the rest. I have unarmed two hand attack, unarmed one handed heavy attack, and light attack. Just you would drag these in and override your running attack and jumping attack with your weapons running attack and jumping attack. So, uh, now that's done, they're actually in there, but we have no way to call upon them right now. So, in Dark Souls, you have to tilt the stick up uh, and press the heavy attack button to do a jumping attack. Um, I don't like the tilt the stick up action, I think it's really silly. So, I'm going to make it, so if you're sprinting and you press the heavy attack button, we'll do a jumping attack. And if you're sprinting and you press the light attack button, we're going to do a running attack. Um, in Dark Souls, I believe there's multiple running attacks and jumping attacks. There's a light and heavy variant of each. We can cover that in the future if you want, but again, um, I don't think it's completely necessary. If you know how to do this function, you can do it the other way, as I'm trying to say. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and then if you want to make variants of each, you can do it on your own. Um, so I'm just going to put some comments here. We're going to transfer these functions to item-based actions if you guys want. The logic will still be the same. It'll just be a lot neater. So again, if you guys want to see that, please comment below. So I'm going to comment this out for when we do that in the future. So we're going to start off under the perform RB melee attack action. What we're going to do is, is we're going to say if the player manager is sprinting, well, we want to handle the sprinting attack or running attack rather. So this is at the top of the chain because you're always searching for that first. If you can't do a sprinting attack, you're going to see if you can do a combo. If you can't do a combo, you're going to do, uh, you're going to do a normal attack. 
and that's how the chain of events are going to go. You're searching for the running attack first, then the combo, and then if you can't do any of that, you will do a normal attack. So then I'm going to make a public void handle running attack function up here. going to have to pass a weapon item, and I'm going to call that weapon. Just like all the other functions we have here, we have handle heavy, handle light, and handle weapon combo. Uh, very similar. So you can actually copy the logic from the handle light attack. I think it's pretty close. It's going to be a little different. Um, we're, we should check that stamina earlier. We'll change that later. Uh, player weapon slot manager attacking weapon equals weapon. Yes, that's right. So what we're changing here is the animations. And we actually don't have these added in up here under our attack animation variables. So let's make four new strings. We'll start off by saying string um, one-handed running attack underscore 01 equals, and make sure you spell this right or it won't play the animation. Mine is capital OH underscore, and I capitalize the first letter of each word, running attack underscore 01. I'm then going to do the same for the one-handed, uh, or two-handed running attack rather, and then the one-handed and two-handed jumping attack. So this code is very similar to what we have already uh, in calling our other attack functions, but the only difference is the setup is different. You need to be sprinting to perform a running attack, quite obviously, and we're going to perform our jumping attack by sprinting and then pressing the heavy attack button. I think that's much better. Um, I actually really don't like how Dark Souls does the jumping attack in their game. It feels sometimes unresponsive. Um, you can't. It feels like you can't do it 100% of the time. The controllers or the controls for it have to line up perfectly. But this is much easier. So. We're going to say, uh, under the animator manager here, we're going to say play target animation, one hand running attack 01. And then we're going to say, oh, I got that backwards, actually. That should be two handed running attack 01 up here, because we're that's if the two hand flag is true. And last attack equals two handed running attack. And then down here, if we're not two handing our weapon, we're going to play the one handed running attack animation. And it's just that simple. Uh, that should work fine now. 99.99% .99 sure. So let's go down here now and call upon the function. If we are sprinting and we are performing an RB melee action, then we're going to perform the running attack. And then we're going to pass our player inventory dot right weapon because a right bumper action is always a right weapon. Left bumper actions for the left weapon, right bumper actions for the right weapon. And then we're just going to hit return. That's very important. We don't want to run any code below this because once we do the, um, the running attack, that's it. We don't want to proceed and perform any more logic. So uh, that looks good. Now, if I go into the game, I actually have to set up the animation events. You guys remember these? Um, on each of your attacks, you have a can rotate, open damage collider, drain stamina, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to do this on video because you guys know this by now. So I'm just going to go down here and just you can almost copy some of these animation events right here. Just highlight them all and copy them and paste them and then edit them as you will. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, got it set up for all four of my attacks. Now, if we go into the game, well, actually, no, we have to actually declare if we're using a right hand or else we won't open a right hand damage collider. So at the beginning of perform RB melee action, we're always using a right hand. You can put that right at the top. This just tells us which hand we're using. So the damage collider function knows which damage collider to open, the left or right. Now, if I go into the game here and press play, we got I got the, the map all changed around. Looks a lot nicer now. If I run at this man and sprint and hit the light attack button, boom, there we go, running attack. That looks beautiful. Okay, perfect. Now if I do two hands. We get the two-handed running attack, and there it is. Excellent. Okay, so if you guys want these animations, by the way, I will try to get a pack out soon. Um, the archery pack is on the docket first, though. Okay, so now we have the running uh, attack set up. Let's do the jumping attack. So um, we got to change a couple things because we actually, if you check here in our handle combat input under input manager, we're just skipping the handle RT action, just calling a heavy attack. Let's Let's make a new function for handle RT action, much like we do for handle RB action. Um, so that's not made yet. Now let's go over here to the combat manager. Let's make that. It's going to work identically to handle RB action, but it will use the RT input instead. Um, let's open up some brackets. Now if we go to the handle RB action, we can kind of see what's going on here. We can actually copy this. Um, we can copy the entirety of this, actually. And instead of performing... Um, an RB melee action, we need to perform an RT melee action, which we don't have made. So let's make that too. I don't think we have it made at least. No, we don't. All right, so let's make the function for performing an RT melee action. Some of you probably already had this done because I didn't do it when I made the heavy attacks because I told you it was identical to the light attacks and that you could do it on your own. But if you don't have it done, then cool, we can do it right now uh, because we are going to change some things inside the function anyway because we're going to make uh, jumping attacks a thing. So let's make a private void for perform RT melee action. I'm flying through this, guys. If I'm going a bit too fast, let me know. I, I just assume by now all of you at this episode are pretty pretty good with Unity. So, all right, let's start off by declaring we're using a right hand. Otherwise, we won't know what damage collider to open. Uh, and we can copy the function right here now, everything from perform RT melee action. We can just paste that right below here. That looks beautiful. 
We're not checking. Or, yeah, we are checking for sprinting, but we're not handling a running attack. So let's erase that. We're going to handle a jumping attack. Um, everything else looks good right now. Yes. I'm going to change how we handle combos in the future too to make it um, nicer. And uh, I'll explain that in the future video when we do the refactor for uh, actions in our weapon. But right now it's fine. Handle light attack. Nope. That's, we don't want that. We want to handle a heavy attack. Perfect. That should be fine. Um, okay. So now we can go ahead and do the handle jumping attack function. So let's scroll up here right below handle running attack or handle light attack. We're going to put it. We can make a public void. Uh Actually, I don't know why I'm making this public. It should be private. We'll change that in a second. Handle jumping attack. And we're going to pass our weapon, just like we did in the handle uh, light attack, heavy attack, running attack, and weapon combo. So I'm actually going to change all these to private right now. I think they were public before because we called them directly from the input manager before we had the whole choose your action thing. But now that we actually handle these inside this class, let's change them all to private. Okay, that's good. So let's open up the handle running attack. And we can copy and paste the logic in here. And I think it will be identical, except we're changing the animations. Yes. Okay. So instead of running attack, just change running and jumping. And there's your logic. Now, on the refactor, uh, or the not the refactor, but the, the changing of the system, um, I guess you'd call it refactor, we're going to still keep all this logic. We're just going to place it on separate um, scripts, scriptable objects, if you will, that will attach to weapons. So this is all still valuable to us. We're just going to move it around and make it night like a lot neater, less if statements, et cetera, et cetera, because we're starting to, to add in a lot of thick logic now. So we we want to make it as clean as we can. But I digress. We'll get to that in the future. Let's call handle jumping attack here. Again, this is RT, so right-handed weapon. So it's your player inventory dot right weapon. Remember, uh, right bumper and right trigger, always your right hand. So that's always the right weapon. All right, save that. And I think we're good. Uh, handle weapon combo here. This actually only works for light attacks because again, I told you guys in the previous video, um, it's the same for heavy if you want to do it. So right now I'm going to rename this to handle light weapon combo. And I'm going to copy this and make a handle heavy weapon combo. And I'm just going to change the light attacks to heavy attacks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call this heavy uh, attack weapon combo function when we do a heavy attack instead of calling the light attack weapon combo function. In the future, I'm going to make one handle combo function, and you're going to be like, you can combo then from light to heavy or heavy to light. I don't think you can do that with this system. Um, that was an oversight. It's actually done in my other projects, so I will come back and update this after we again do the weapon based action system, and it will work um, just as I intended it to originally. This still works, just I could make it better, so I'm going to. Okay, now under the, where did that go? Right. Oh, under handle heavy attack, we're actually not even calling a two handed heavy attack. So let's do that. Um, let's copy this right here. And for some reason, this is a light attack being called under heavy attack function. I don't think I had the animations back then or something. Okay. So let's change light to heavy. Copy and paste this in here. Change one handed to two handed. Change light to heavy again. And we're going to make sure it knows our last attack. Okay, it looks good. All right. Um, right here. I just realized I forgot looking back at this clip. I forgot to change that to heavy, but that's okay. So let's say handle heavy weapon combo. Okay, that's good. Now this should be fine. All right. Now if I go into the game here and hit play, if I run at this guy and then hit the heavy attack button, I should do a jumping attack. So I'm going to sprint right now. I'm going to leap. Yes, there it is. Excellent. Beautiful. That looks fantastic. If you guys like this video, be sure to drop a like. It does help my series, which will help out me and you in the end. Leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon. But don't go just yet, because I'm going to go back. We're going to talk about what we're going to do in the future. So I'm going to quickly go over to my uh, my solo project to explain something again. So as I was saying at the beginning of the video, we have actions right now based on our inputs. The inputs detect if what kind of weapon we're holding, like a sword or a caster. And then we choose an action based on that, which is fine. It's nice. It's neat. But it can get neater, because if I drag over my other window here, you will see that the actual actions depend on the weapon themselves. So all the script will do is say, okay, you're pressing the RB button. Cool, buddy. If you're pressing right bumper, then play your inventory right weapons, right bumper action. That's what it would do, which in this case is a light attack. And if you press the RT button, it would say, okay, play your right handed weapons RT action, which is a heavy attack. So it keeps the input code super clean. And then all you have to do is go to the weapon and run this scriptable object that's on the weapon. 
This will make the combat manager and the input handler like a lot neater, and it adds a lot of modularity for the weapons because you could give different weapons different RT actions even during the same class. For example, like you could give one straight sword one LB action to block, or you could give another one uh, a light attack action when you hit LB, so it could do a light attack. A lot of cool stuff like that, so it's going to be a lot better. Um, if you guys do want to see it, please, again, leave me a comment. If there is enough um, interest in this, I will do it sooner rather than later. I posted in the Discord. A few of you guys seem to be into it, so I just wanted to drop in a video and talk about it here. And if you guys aren't in the Discord, be sure to join because there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Okay, I will see you guys in the next episode where we will go back and finish our archery system and add in aiming.